Hello, welcome to EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis, and today I want to talk about Adobe Bridge. Um, I've been using Photoshop for about 12 years, and I cannot tell you at what point they introduced Bridge into Photoshop because it was intimidating. I didn't want another program to, uh, to have to, to learn, so I didn't, and I didn't learn it until actually last week. And now I'm starting to understand the absolute power of Adobe Bridge. And I learned this uh, basically through a Lightroom course that I did with Matt Klaskowski last week. Um, he was talking about Lightroom. Uh, afterwards, we got in a discussion about Bridge and uh, how to open up a TIFF and a JPEG into a, um, Camera Raw without it being a raw file. And it's actually done through Bridge. And that's what kind of got me onto this. Okay, maybe I need to cross this bridge. Ha, <laughs> no pun intended. So that's what I'm going to do right now. We're going to talk about Bridge and how powerful and how cool it is. So you go up to File, and go to Browse and Bridge. And again, something's going to open up that's kind of like, whoa, what is this? What does it do? Um, and every time I opened up Bridge accidentally, I would always close it out because I didn't want to mess up anything on my, on my hard drive. But what Bridge does is it kind of acts as a, uh, a transparency of your hard drive. If you move a file in Bridge, it won't move it unless you tell it to move it on your hard drive. It won't delete it unless you tell it to delete it on your hard drive. It's a lot like Lightroom. And for a lot of Lightroom users, this tutorial might not be that important to you. Um, but to us Photoshop people who don't really want to go into Lightroom, this is some pretty good stuff. So the first thing you want to do is add a favorite folder uh, to where you keep your, um, your photos. So I'm going to take you on the adventure to my HDR photos. I have to go into my local disk, which is C, my docs one. I'm gonna go down to, uh, let's see here, photographs, and then to photos, and then to data photography. That's where all my HDR stuff is. So at that point, just before I get there, I can drag and drop this over here to make it a favorite. So what I will do is, um, let's say I'll just take Elemental Graphs and take my Elemental Graphs folder and drag it and drop it over here. Now that's a favorite. I can always navigate right to that. And it, if you see the string up here, it's telling you all the places it had to go to to get to there. Or you can just click on your favorite folder. So that's one of the cool things about, uh, about Bridge is it gives you access to your favorite folders right then and there. It, uh, if you have a HDR folder or whatever folder it is, you can make a favorites folder and get yourself there. Family photos, whatever what have you. The other cool thing about Bridge is that you can make collections. And uh, so I'll just go ahead and make a new collection now. So I'm going to call this collection, um, let's see here. We'll do a new, uh, no, I don't want to do a smart collection. This is a new, new collection. And that new collection is going to be HDR for tutorial. So what you can do is you can go through all your folders and you can start clicking through them and seeing all the pictures that are there on your hard drive. Now when you drag and drop one of these pictures over to the uh, the collection, it's not going to move it on your hard drive. It's just going to make a quick access area for that photo. And you can actually right click on it and open it with um, Photoshop or Camera Raw, here's where you'd open up a RAW or a JPEG or a TIFF into Camera Raw. But you can also reveal where it is in Bridge, or you can reveal where it is in the Explorer. So if you happen to go to Blake's favorite HDR, uh, for example, and I right click on this image and I say, where the heck is this? I can find it in Bridge by right clicking and say reveal in Bridge, and it'll tell me exactly where it is on my hard drive right here in Bridge. Now if I said reveal in Explorer, it would open up Windows Explorer and take me right to that photo in Windows Explorer. I, I could have saved myself hours of time over the last two years with Photoshop CS5 and 6 um, by accessing my images this way. And I really wish I would have done this a long time ago because now I can make a folder of all my favorite HDR images. Very cool. So let's go back to this data photography thing. Let's say I go through here and I put this, this uh, file into my Blake's favorite HDR folder. I didn't put it in there, I took a copy of it. Uh, it's kind of like a hidden copy, we've discussed that before. But let's say I don't, I don't really like it. I can do what's called, a, a, I can reject it. And uh, to reject it, you can press 
Alt and Delete. Click on the image and press Alt and Delete. And that will reject it from this folder, but you're still seeing it here. So what you can do is go to View and go to uh, Unclick the Show Reject Files. So as you're going through your favorite folder, if I say, ooh, this eyeball picture, I don't know how I feel about that. You know, At first I thought it was one of my favorites, but now I'm not sure if it's one of my favorites. I can press Alt, Delete, and reject it, and it goes away. But it doesn't go away. It still saves that reject file in there, and I can, I can see those at any time if I want to. So now let's say I didn't really mean to delete that eyeball picture because it's really kind of gritty, nasty, and cool, like on my HDR side that I like. I can press Control-0, and bring that back out of the reject pile. Now, those are some of the cool powerful features of this. Another cool thing that I really like is the export feature. I don't use Flickr nearly as much as I would like to um, because it's just, you know, updating a blog, updating Facebook, um, got a 40 hour a week job, got a family. I don't have time to go to Flickr and and update f files and a lot of times I even forget to do it on Facebook and I don't really like posting stuff to Facebook anyway but that's beside the point they make it so easy to update files uh, to Flickr it's not even funny so let's say I want to I want to update uh, this Sand Harbor sunset picture to my Flickr stream what I can do is I can uh, you double click first you sign into Flick Flickr and then you have access to your Flickr account now I have a preset saved here, um, which basically this preset, if you go into the uh, Flickr account and go to image options, I just have it to constrain to fit to 1024 um, in the resolution so that it just makes the image smaller as it exports it. It's not going to take it off my hard drive and dump it onto Flickr. It's going to export a copy of it right to Flickr, just like you'd upload to Flickr anyway. So you just drag and drop this file right to the Flickr. And let's say I put, I'll put the, uh, this one on there too. And now when I click the export my preset job, it's going to start publishing both of those images right to Flickr. So let's go ahead and pull up my Flickr stream here. So I can click on my, uh, and there they are. They're right there in Flickr. So I can change the name of these because I don't want that to say new edit uh, one year later because that's my own little name for it. I can name this um, Pigeon Point Lighthouse. And just take off that edit. Sand Harbor. And that was in Tahoe. Okay. So, what else can you do in Bridge? You can also look at your pictures in Bridge. You have a little loop here. You can see all the little things that are going on in your photo in Bridge. You can look at the metadata in that photo. So this was taken at F22 with an ISO of 100. Um, you can see the resolution of it. You can actually keyword it too. You can give this keywords and then you can run a filter and look up those keywords to find them later. I don't really see a point for that for me. I'm not really a stock photographer, but if I was a stock photographer, uh, it'd be great. I could look up a um, um, man smoking cigar. And if at some point I had 15 pictures of a man smoking a cigar, it would pull up all that stuff that I asked him to. Now, the other thing that I really like about uh, Bridge is that this is your Bridge to Camera Raw. It's a very helpful tool to get to Camera Raw. I can right click any TIFF or any JPEG and I can say Open in Camera Raw. And now I'm right in Camera Raw in Photoshop and I can start using features to edit these TIFFs and JPEGs. And before, I would actually just skip right over that. I wouldn't even do any workflow in Camera Raw. I do it right in Photoshop because I didn't think I could access Camera Raw. I thought it was just for RAW files, but it's not. It's not just for RAW files. Now, the other cool part about that is, is that if you want a supported JPEG or TIFF file to automatically open up in Camera Raw, you can go to Edit, go to Camera Raw Preferences, and then down in this box here, it says, uh, automatically open JPEGs with settings. That's if you have a JPEG file that already has Camera Raw settings, it will open it automatically in Camera Raw, or you change it so that all uh, JPEGs automatically open in Camera Raw, and you can do the same thing for TIFF files. So now you don't have to right click anymore and say open in Camera Raw. You can just double click that photo and it'll open up in Camera Raw. So I can just double click this photo and right there, bam, I'm in Camera Raw. So I can start
valuable presets or valuable uh, sliders that are in camera raw in my HDR workflow on a TIFF file. So imagine that you just get out of Photomatix, you've got that TIFF file. You, you go into Bridge, you open it up in Camera Raw, and now you're using uh, Camera Raw adjustments on a um, Photomatix tone map file. It's pretty incredible. So I pretty much just learned this whole Bridge thing um, this last week, and I love it. Uh, I'm navigating through it like crazy, and it's actually really simple, and it doesn't have to be as complex as uh, as you make it out to be by first looking at it. Just play around with it. A lot of things with Photoshop just require you to play around and experiment with in order to like it. Another cool thing about uh, Bridge that I forgot to tell you is let's say we go to the, um, uh, let's go to my collections and go to HDR. There's a little scroll bar down here. You can see all of your images on the very, very small scale on the tiles or pretty up close and personal too. It depends on how you want to look at them. All right, this is EverydayHDR.com. My name is Blake Rudis. I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on Bridge, and uh, have a great weekend.